And we're live. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my video. Uh, it's a Let's Play. Today we're playing uh, this game, Magic the Gathering Arena. And uh, I've recorded a bunch of videos a moment ago. Um, deciding, hey, you know, why don't I actually just make a proper like introduction video? So that's what this is. Hello, my name is Nilsson. Um, and uh, I was figuring, you know, what I could do is make a video on how to make uh, a popper deck um, in Arena. I mean, I don't really, I can't, it, this isn't really a guide. It's more like a, hey, this is a thing that I'm doing. To uh, um, introduce myself to the YouTube verse sphere, aside from just being some random guy who likes to leave comments on popular YouTubers' videos uh, when they when the comment strikes me. So, um, yeah. But uh, today, magic is uh, a little bit of introduction. Uh, or about about me. Uh, I am new to the YouTube thing, but I've played Magic for a few years now. Actually, I started playing when my brother showed me the game years ago. Like, I think Kamigawa was like rotating out or something like that. Um, or it was in Standard, the first one, not the the new one. It's fixed and come out Neon Dynasty. That's the Sci-fi ninjas one. No, not that one. I'm talking about uh, the original OG Kamigawa and uh, Yeah um, He wanted to show me how to play the game Because uh, he got into it. I thought it was really cool. He kind of described it to me back in the day It was Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh were kind of sort of the big things He said Yu-Gi-Oh was like a childer childlike version of magic and then it kind of sort of exploded into its own thing, um, which is kind of funny. Uh, but at the time, he was technically true. It was uh, back in like 2000, whatever, pre-10, um, <clears throat> 2000 pre-10. <laughs> uh, it was just kind of sort of like a new thing, and like I think even the people who were making the game and the show were all like, "We're figuring it out. What this is," and then. Eventually, they came into something, but uh, um, yeah, he kind of started to describe it. It's, it kind of plays similarly. I think Yu-Gi-Oh was actually inspired by Magic: The Gathering because it had a very similar format. You have your attack and defense stats, only in this case, it's your attack and health stats, <laughs> and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. But I'm playing the game. Uh, this we're in 2021 and like these past years have been whew, let's not talk about it too much or for too long because i think uh the world knows about it uh but yeah um before the, that happened or that started happening as it's ongoing now um i got into i got back into magic before i got married and uh um you know, my brother's like, oh man, you should really play Arena. I'm like, no, I want to play the cards. And he's like, okay, whatever. And then I got into the game, and now I'm in love with the game. Mostly because of just how easy it is to get cards in this game. <laughs> like, um, like, it's stupidly easy. And doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Which is part of the reason why I've been consistently playing Arena instead of going into the stores. Because every single time I go to the store, I pay money and I can't spend a whole lot of money but uh not to say that not going not to say that going to the store is a bad idea i think if you have a local hobby shop that sells magic the gathering stuff and has people that meet regularly go for it you know those guys are cool um in fact they were actually the the ones who got us all into this game anyways in the first place <clears throat> anyways that was a neat little three minute rant um, but yeah, I've been playing, I got, I officially got back, we actually have a little list here, 
Um, in the in this block, which how they have this arranged is kind of awkward. So like, these are the remasters. I think this was like the first set that they had in Arena, and then they had Ravnica and the War of the Spark. I technically got in right here in the course of 2020. It was 2019, and they introduced the 2020 set for the 2020 format. So War of the Spark was very much still around, and uh, I'm used to the format where it was this, and then we don't worry about that. This, and then it went all the way up to here. And like this was kind of sort of like the last set and stuff. Eldraine was the set that got like a jillion things banned as time went on. And then now we're here. And they came up with Alchemy. That's supposed to be like arena exclusive. Which is fine. I guess. They could rebalance their game that they know is broken and with even more broken cards. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> right, um, my favorite set is Strixhaven, and unfortunately Eldraine, and Forgotten Realms. Those are my three big ones. Uh, Ravnica block has a really cool... These three are all in Ravnica essentially, and like this is a really cool and fun block. I love the mono, or I love the dual colors. Ikoria has a really has a lot of really fun cards in it that make that made this block of standard function. But like Eldraine had a bunch of stuff. Oh, Theros, Theros actually is my. These four are my original. I play a lot of D and D, so like this was an instant hit for me. Strixhaven is kind of sort of like a Harry Potter like, <clears throat> but I was really excited because uh, my preference of deck style, wait, is uh, burst. Particularly, is it these two? <laughs> I also enjoy playing Jeskai and Azorius as well. But like, um... So blue, uh, white, blue, red, red, wine, blue. A lot of people joke about it being patriotic colors, and it is. Not gonna lie, it is. But that's not the reason why I like these colors. Um... It's just the theme of, like, you know, how you have white being uh, organization, blue being knowledge, and red being passion and action. I feel like those three just mix together so freaking well, and it's so fun <clears throat> with what you can do in the game. It's all like, everything seems pretty straightforward, and then you throw blue in, and it mixes everything up you know you think you're you think it's one play but then like something completely from like left field just comes in and punches you in the face you know <laughs> like <laughs> um but yeah um but yeah the 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 consistent though has been i love blue uh, blue is awesome. Um, I've actually been experimenting a lot with blue Azorius uh, mid-range equipment, <coughs> which is fun. A lot of people play life gain right now, uh, mono white life gain, because mono white life gain has always been really powerful, from what I can tell. Um, but I've run today. I've run into a lot of really cool decks that just like was massive. So, but today I would like to create a new deck 
with you guys. But have it be a power bear deck, probably. <clears throat> oh, you know, I have a red and black deck in here called Eternal Dwarves. Let's have this be an, e an is it dwarf deck. That'd be fun. Seven dwarves is it? Is it seven dwarves or is it he knows? We'll know. Because it's our deck. Anyways. Um yeah. Uh so what I like to do is I just like to see what I have available and then go from there. Um one thing I know for sure that I have is uh Instant casts is strong between the, these two decks, so having stuff to like quickly uh, react to answer, <coughs> we find answers to all of life's problems, whether if it's uh, prevent a spell from happening or get rid of it after the fact it's been cast, you know? Um, however, when it comes to this, we're, we're focusing on creatures, and uh, we need to do something. Something about uh, blue is uh, protective. Like, for example, Starlit Mantle here. We can enchant a dwarf with Starlit Mantle. Uh, they'll get hexproof for the moment we cast it. Uh, it has flash, and uh, yeah. Um... And since we're going to be running enchantments, we could probably look at other things, like uh, uh, things that could interact with enchantments. Constellation is a key word. Constellation. Well, not a whole lot of stuff that interacts with Constellation from Theros. It's just this thing that gets flying whenever you cast a thing, and that's not overly impressive. I mean... That's not fair. Let me look at it. Okay, it's a 3-1 wizard merfolk with flying when you cast a flying or an enchantment when it enters the battlefield under your control. <coughs> um, I only have the one copy of it, and I don't have any common. I have one common, yeah. I don't think it's going to be worth crafting one common. If, it, if we were running a different color, like uh, green has uh, a lot of constellation effects, that would be really neat. But let's see what else we can do. Um, oh, another thing is... Uh, oh gosh, where was it? Oh, that was a Zendikar. I was, there's a very... There's a very specific card I was thinking of. Zendikar is... Right here. Shell Shield. It's a good card. Uh, it has Kicker. Which is a very... Fun mechanic, I think. Uh, we can defend a Dwarf that way. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I'm not sure if we would necessarily have to worry about making something weaker, but learning is great. Um... We need a way to dig Omen of the Season enchantment, uh, so that'll work. <sighs> Don't need to look at lands just yet. Enchantment. <clears throat> oh yeah, enchantment creatures. Let's get you in here so that we can assure ensure a fair balance of colors oh yeah this is a it's expensive but it'll be great it's great for removal this gives re or a first strike which is always handy it's also an aura or an enchantment <clears throat> and then uh we got a lot of red going on let's look at uh blue again uh, we need more. I'm scrolling my mouse wheel. Uh, we need more. 
card to draw. We could go with Eidolon. That might be a little slow though, because if I were, if we were running um, Simic, which is green and blue, I would definitely say let's run Eidolon, but like we're trying to win the game fast, and unfortunately that's not going to do us. Oh, this guy. He's a great addition. Makes uh, spells cast on our opponent's turn. Cost one less. And that's great. Because then what we can do... Is... See if there's something else. Let's look at a sorcery. Let's. I like to have one wild card sorcery. Let's go with Serpentine Curve. Serpentine Curve is a pretty neat card. Because it's all like... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a firing my laser. That's uh, that was me just saying nonsense. <laughs> I do that from time to time. No, what actually happens is uh, you create a, uh, a fractal token and put uh, a certain amount of counters on, ca plus one plus one counters on it, where it equals to the number of instants or sorceries. Actually, that might not be super great because. I don't think we have any. I think that one's the only one, so we would make a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, no, we don't. We're not running instants or sorcery, so that's not great. Um, oh, here's a wild card. Elemental Masterpiece. Just one. All we need is one. And, uh... And it's actually kind of great because this does convey, or this is a, it's a create two four four blue and red elemental creature tokens, um, at sorcery speed, and uh, you can tap two to discard the card or this spell instead and create a treasure token. So it's like, if we see it early game, that's not the end of the world, you know. <laughs> All right, now we gotta look at lands. Lands are. Where the things happen. Um, Prospari Campus can't go wrong with that. Um, land. Uh, there's some snow land here from Kaldine, but we're not running uh, Frostbite, so there's no reason to take it. <coughs> And, uh, yeah. Actually, you know, we could, um, lower the number, certain number of spells to actually give us an additional elemental masterpiece in the event. So let's go ahead and remove that, and get a second copy of that. Um, let's grab Evolving Wilds. All right, actually, no, we don't have sorceries. What we do, we would like to have creatures, especially dwarves. That's in the theme. Um, it's a tap land, but like, I'm sure we can make it work. Evolving wilds. These are neutral cost. I'm gonna go with this one because I like it. We'll get four copies of those. And, uh, yeah. Make sure we get a healthy dosage of, uh, mountains to islands. I, th I think this will be sufficient. Now we get to call this something. Um,. Is it dwarves? Alright. And then I'm going to put this in my favorite so I can find it later. And this is our deck. We made this. Well, I mean, I made it, but you watched me make it. Now we get to play it. So something I like to do... I, I'm actually a fan of this uh, 
Something of uh, this uh, opt card art is really cool. Uh, something that I like to do whenever I make a new deck is I like to play it against Sparky just to see how it functions, you know? Sparky has a fairly straightforward AI. So, it shouldn't be a problem. We want to avoid playing Dwarven Mining until we get three or more mountains. Other mountains. That's not great. <laughs> Things with Death Touch um, are somewhat scary, but we have our shields open. So, whenever they do a thing like uh, murder or something. And uh, we can just counter that with a uh, thing. Since their uh, stuff is down, we can scry. I will take this tap land. Brother! How much does this? It's plus three. Plus three. So. Oh, wait, he's tapped out. Attack with the death touch. We're going to ignore promptly because we don't care. All right, I'm gonna have to play the dwarf of mine. We don't get a one-one dwarf. Sad days, but that's okay. Because instead, what happens is we get two four-four dwarfs. like, nah, that's fine, I'll just get him back, but no. <laughs> Sparky. <laughs> um, yeah, that was Sparky, but I think really weird, unfortunately. Stuff like that happens all the time. But right now I'm looking for, All I know is we we win at this rate. <laughs> so yeah, it works against Sparky for sure. <laughs> if I draw all the dwarves consistently. Now I like to make sure I run two games just to be safe. If it works, great. We're not going to have this much luck playing against other players, unfortunately, so... Because it never is that smooth. But the things that I pay attention to are uh, how, I'm, how are my opening hands? How is... Uh, how are my land drops? If I play in a very specific situation, how 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 do I get around it? You know. <clears throat> I didn't play this dwarf because I wasn't sure if he was if uh, Sparky was going to do a thing. Like this. <laughs> okay. Let's get a second island real quick. So now what we can do is we can either wait for next turn or attack and kill that 4-4. Four four. Downside is we lose the 4-4, four four, or we lose a dwarf 
permanently, essentially. Plus side, we deal with the 4 of 4. Let's try dealing with the 4 of 4. We lose the 3 3. But it's been dealt with. Guy deals more damage to that creature and attack. I still have a 3 3 in the end. Let's fish. We haven't played any blue spells yet. So that is uh, for sure thumb of approval, two thumbs up approval from Sparky. It is good deck against Sparky. <laughs> and now, now that we know that it functions fairly well. Uh, let's put it to the test against Historic, because it is technically- Oh gosh, I gotta find it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Historic. Where is it? Okay, here's the fit. It's right here. Okay. Is it Dwarves? Is it dwarves or is it wizards? <laughs> Currently waiting. Ghost rave, ghost rave, ghost rave. Anyways. Um. We don't need to worry about fetching for anything now that we got both, so I will hold off on playing Evolving Wilds for the time being. They're playing a life game of some sort. Always with the life game. Okay, I will fetch for a blue. <laughs> it's very aggressive. <laughs> Deceptively aggressive. It's like, oh, seven dwarves. Okay, I could, I could out gain that with life. Nope. <laughs> I didn't even play any blue spells in there. That might just be the nature of this deck. You know, I'm just going to be playing the red cards for the most part. <laughs> I don't run 
counterspell or anything. It's just hexproof. Let's see how this one goes. That's a cool cat. Turn one opt. Although the opponent does go first. This does give me the upper hand of deciding they're playing blue. Okay. Turn one opt. <laughs> uh sure. Oh, I don't have to cycle it essentially immediately. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get in there. <laughs> we super gotta get in there. How many turns do I have? Uh, we have eight counters. have a card where it's uh, this creature can't be blocked by anything. Oh, it's that card. You might have noticed. I play is it? <laughs> this could I actually get something different it's not gonna be able to save them okay they've been saved <laughs> Of course, they can't attack with it. If they attack with it, it's GG. Okay. Let's see if they have something. They might. Unsummon? Nope! <laughs> Gosh. That uh, game too. off against Germs the Rock. Oh, I forgot about you. <laughs> I 
I do go first. Yeah, let's keep this. <clears throat> Mari keys. Mountain. Seven dwarves. Hello! I'm not I'm not I'm not doing that. Uh yes. I'm kind of expecting to lose this one, but we'll see. It's just minus two, minus two, and also... Okay, yeah, that's fine. Go for another blue. They're not gonna block the one one because that's a thing. They might not block the other. That's annoying. So, it's like, beginning of upkeep, they gained a life. Interesting. I was kind of expecting it to be the other way around, but I guess this makes sense too. Okay, here's the plan. No! This land.
I want to have enough for both. So... Let's do... This. Kind of puts your strat in uh, interesting circumstance, huh? One of the neat things about moments is I can scry. One of the bad things, though, is I can't sacrifice to get rid of something. So I'm going to lose next turn if I'm not careful. It's basically game, though. Man, how do they play around everything? Like... <laughs> I needed that omen so I could kill my own creature. I couldn't do it. <sighs> so I had the answers. Just had the wrong luck. Let's see what else we can do. Good starting hand, actually. Oh, God. Okay. I just want to give you an idea of what deck I'm playing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they're dwarves. Yes, they're calm. I see you with your precious, 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 precious. The world tree. If you lose to me, I'll laugh. So hard. Okay, which one? Get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Your world tree nonsense. <laughs> ah, gosh. That was game four, this is game five. Ninety nine ninjas. Imagine the commander deck. They're the player, and his deck is just 99 ninjas. Not even any land. They're all zero cost ninjas, with any deck can have any number of ninjas. <laughs> of the zero cost variety. I'm missing some dwarves. This isn't great. Ninety-nine ninjas go by. Uh, yeah, I'll put away 
one of these. That's not annoying or anything. Prevents haste and an effective blocker, I guess. You can guarantee a hit from Speaker of the Heavens there. Anything to get rid of any opportunity for him to get life is what I just heard, or what I was just told. So. <clears throat> Is this an enchantment? Yeah. Authority of the consoles. <sighs> he has to talk to each ninja individual. Okay. Consulting the ninjas. All 99 of them. It's probably 99 ninjas getting into an argument with each other. First things first. Deal with this nonsense. I'll give you your one life. I'm taking back the life that you got the previous round. <laughs> creatures. Hmm. I know just a card for this. None of you are them. That's not quite it either. No. Gosh darn it. <laughs> It'll come up. <laughs> it is somewhere. I suppose another thing could be... Oh, there you are. So first things first. Let's fetch for a second now. Then, we do this. Smash! No problem! <laughs> <laughs> All right, good game. <laughs> that was a cool card, though. Oh, uh, was he running green, too? Huh. That is a cool card. 
just basically everyone gets like gets a hex proof. <clears throat> That's from Dominaria. That's a cool card. Um, that was game five. Let's do one more. And then I'll call the video. And then do like... Some stuff. Simo, 96. Simo? Simo? Like Simon? Sima? Simo? We're thinking really hard. <clears throat> Let's look at the back side of our is it card tops. By the way, this is my favorite card top. I use it for everything. Is it's my favorite favorite Ravnica guild? I work for um uh, uh, my local city as a draftsman for the engineering department and uh, that's kind of sort of what they what uh, is it does is uh, they work on infrastructure for Ravnica and uh, they have uh, a god at, at their uh, at their head which is the god of the entire city essentially the reason that the city is there is because of of one dragon and it's so cool and the dragon is like super smart super powerful and like the D, D book has him as think stronger than the tarasque from what i understand and it's very terrifying <laughs> not as terrifying as how long this guy is taken apparently so <clears throat> I guess I could do my opinion on uh, Ravnica guilds while we're waiting for this guy, just to kill time. Uh, um, as uh, as I just got through saying, uh, is it is great. Um, Azurius is pretty okay. Not sure what the timer was. Uh, Azurius is pretty okay. Um, I am a fan of Azurius. It's just those colors in general. Um, let's see, that was, uh, blue, white, and then adjacent to them would be, man, I wish we were on that board that had all the guilds on it. Uh, let's see, Azorius, next to them would be probably the, Dem Demir, I think it was. Uh, they're... they're not... I mean, they're cool. I really like them. I don't like playing their deck. <laughs> um, I just can't get into the theme of it, you know? Like, it's evil what they can do, but like... That's not true. I did get into the deck when uh, they were still around and stuff. Um... Alright, good game. Um, <clears throat> that was game four and a half. Uh, and Demir is all like super secretive peeps, which is pretty fun. Um, Simic Conclave is kind of sort of a little bit in the other direction, but they're like the uh, the other side of the coin of is it where they're all like let's make the scariest monster because we can so they make kaijus and stuff much like these dwarfs <laughs> on turn three <laughs> um Um, let's see, Boros is white, red, uh, I love them because they have angels, and 
I am a huge fan of angels, just in general. So, um, in real life, in um, fantasy settings. Oh. What did that do? That's just rude! You don't do that to a man! They demonstrated they have things that they can get back from the graveyard. However, I am interested in if I can kill this guy, then that's great. That's great. Because they're all like, put counters on a thing, and I'm like, no. <laughs> There's no nothing on here to give you counters. <clears throat> I get that you're doing a showcase of your deck. But, like... You kind of, like, jumped the gun there, if you asked me. Going to combat? You wanna you wanna do you wanna do a crunch on my face? There we go. That's the delectable crunch that we're waiting for. Just give my guy enchantment and boom. And let's go. Alright. And boom! And let's go! Let's search for blue cause white. And then boom, and let's go. What was this card that he discarded? Rip. <laughs> I'll win in three turns at <laughs> this rate. Go ahead. Break it to you, my dude. Think you're toast. From the forge. <laughs> This is a good deck. I would actually dare to argue that this might be more powerful than my Eternal Dwarves deck. If there's a way where I could give Sparky one of my decks, because I know there was a feature, or the way you would compete against an AI in a previous version of a video game Magic the Gathering is you could give the AI a deck that you made and you could just 
play against each other. I would love to have someone fight me against uh, using my one of my own decks. So. Burly Breaker and Dire Strain Demolisher. Gosh, that's a really fun looking card though. And day and night are a little confusing for me to actually play around. So like, if it's like, oh, it's daytime, okay, whatever. Oh, it's nighttime, okay, whatever. You know, <laughs> like. All right. Um, I did say that was the last one. Uh, let's go back to. Is it dwarves? Uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Is it dwarves? Didn't really do this a whole lot. I didn't even discard it. But you know, the option is there. <laughs> Someone might say go with something else. You know, I might. I don't really get to get that far into the game. Because by the time uh, it gets to, uh, by the time we get uh, get the going out there, then it's like, don't really need to worry about it, you know? You know what? There we go. Is it dwarves? I'll even change the name. It is... Dwarves. It is dwarves. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, this is uh, a deck that I just made today. You guys watched me play it, and uh, pretty competently, pretty confident in uh, the play queue. Although we didn't really get a chance to see a whole lot of people because the game was over before anyone could do anything. So, <laughs> so uh, popper, great. This is a popper deck. Everything here is common. Everything here is common. Tap lands are all common. Basic lands are common. I might actually change what lands specifically I end up using to commemorate. And also to really deliver on the theme of uh, enchantments. Oop. We'll use... Maybe. I could go with this. I could go with something else. Uh, but for now, it's a special deck in my heart that we got to work on together. And you know what? We didn't need no fancy mythic cards. We didn't need no fancy, uh, uh, things. Although, in all fairness, uh, I think a lot of people who play like the really bonker wild, bonkers wild, oh, Bargin is pretty good. You could probably replace uh, Elemental Masterpiece with Bargin, because Bargin is a pretty good card too, so. Because um, each attacking non-human creature, there's no humans in this deck, it's all dwarves. <laughs> so. And uh, nymphs. So. Yeah. Anywho. Um, yeah. This has been a delightful time. Thank you for being here. Watching my video. Yes. Save it. Thank you for uh, tuning in. I um, hope you all have a great Christmas. On a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Or something like that. Yeah. Two thumbs up, and let's go. Y'all have a great day.